What's going on YouTube? JJ is born here and welcome back to another edition of After the Movie. I'm currently in my theater parking lot right now. I just got out of seeing Dragon Ball Super, Superhero, the all new Dragon Ball movie. That's a little bit of sell for you. Um, but yes, finally, Dragon Ball Super, Superhero has finally been unleashed here in the United States. And I had a really, really good time. I went rocking my Capsule Corp t-shirt, got a couple compliments on it. Uh, this theater was packed, by the way. It was like a sold out showing. Uh, everyone was having a really good time. This was a very, very funny movie. It's it's more of a comedy, I think, than any of the other recent Dragon Ball movies. Like we had Battle of Gods, we had Resurrection F, and then we had Dragon Ball Super Broly. And of course you had the Dragon Ball Super anime that came out as well. But this is definitely more of a comedy than the other stuff it's kind of more in tune with the original dragon ball and it makes sense the red ribbon army uh is back again uh we get some new layers to that story that we didn't previously know existed we come to find dr Jero's uh had a grandson uh the, the king of the red ribbon, ribbon army uh had a son named magenta and he's been secretly running things and then they built new androids and then there's the sort of a return of another character but technically no it's not actually the return of a character like i thought it would be um and then you have gohan and then you have piccolo piccolo basically is the main character of this particular story and it focuses on him uh gohan who of course has neglected his training once again you know kind of the same thing we've seen a bunch uh piccolo kind of has to go like undercover spy a bit to kind of figure out what's going on here goku and vegeta and uh beerus and Whis all make little appearances almost like they only have like two scenes in the movie they are not the focal point so it's kind of up to the other heroes to kind of stand up and stop this new threat so and also we have Piccolo uh, basically like teaching Pan stuff. And it's all really cute. Like this is a very lighthearted Dragon Ball movie. Even when it gets like kind of serious a bit towards the end, it still manages to keep that lighthearted tone throughout most of the thing. Uh, I, I had a really good time with this one. I mean, I'm kind of biased because I really love Dragon Ball in the universe, but this is a movie that I think most people kind of go in. If you're a fan of it, you're going to laugh and have a really good time with it. I'm trying to keep spoilers vague for those of you who don't uh want to know anything going into it just just kind of keep that in mind red ribbon army focus piccolo is the main character of the movie uh you see his relationship like with pan it kind of mirrors that of gohan always a bit more of a softy there's a lot of really funny stuff with piccolo and it's like piccolo has his own house he's got a cell phone and every time he answers the cell phone he like holds it like this and he's got like a little like like a cat phone case or something like that He's got his little plushies and everything. Uh, there's some very funny stuff with that. And, like, Go Gohan and Videl are kind of, like, a little bit too reliant on him to kind of take care of Pan because Gohan is just off doing his research stuff. And Piccolo is just getting, like, really annoyed by it. He's like, take care of your darn kid, Gohan. So you got that. Goku and Vegeta, if you want to know much about them, they spend the whole movie basically on Whis's plan. They are out of the picture. So that's, that's what's good about this. Goku and Vegeta are out of the picture this time around, and it's up to everyone else to kind of save the day and then you have kind of some misunderstandings in terms of like uh what's going on with the villains and that they kind of think the z warriors is one thing uh and then like the z warriors don't realize that you know <clears throat> there's a big misunderstanding and such kind of going on with it there too but uh, like i said new characters are introduced dr Dro's grandson uh magenta who is the son of like the, king, the head of the red ribbon army uh we also have these two new androids gamma one and gamma two created by dr Jero's grandson and then there's a secret project which a lot of people have kind of figured out uh by this point so yeah i had a really good time with it <clears throat> now i knew like some things going into the movie there's gonna be some new forms and transformations and stuff and i knew like a certain character sort of was kind of making a comeback uh that was kind of something i theorized but it's not quite the same it's kind of a variation on that so if you're going in expecting something like i kind of was you may come away a little bit disappointed in that because uh it, it is a very well-known dragon ball-esque character that's kind of makes a comeback but it's kind of uh that that portion was a bit underwhelming that's probably the only underwhelming part of the movie maybe because i kind of hyped it up for myself so uh if you go into it blind it'll be a nice surprise but if you go in kind of expecting something like i was you may come away a little disappointed in that aspect but i shouldn't take that fully away from the movie because like i said that's kind of me setting unreasonable expectations for myself although i feel like you could have done something a little bit more with it probably because it kind of happens more in the third act but still could have been you know a little bit entertaining other characters kind of appear goten and trunks are a little bit older this time around they show up krillin does there's a really funny some really funny stuff with him 
um Bulma she's extremely petty like she has like some really petty wishes and stuff the comedy like I said this is a very very funny movie we get to see Piccolo kind of take on a little bit of a spiral and such and uh, he is the main character of it and I'm really like happy to see that and it's just a really good time. I, I had a blast with this whole thing. The crowd was really into it. We all applauded at certain bits, too. Some moments could have been a little bit more epic. Um, maybe they kind of took a little bit more time with it because this is just, uh, I don't know, it's like, an, like just under two hours uh, in terms of this movie. Um, it could have made the moments a little bit more epic, but this is more of a comedy than anything else, and I thought it was really funny. And it really, really kind of made me like miss the world of Dragon Ball. Uh, there's, there's some very funny stuff even with Lord Beerus. So we get to find some new interesting things about him that we didn't realize before. Uh, <laughs> and <clears throat> it's just a really good time. So I'm gonna get into spoilers at this point. So if you don't, there's also one thing after the credits that is gonna please a lot of fans. And for me, I, I scream finally in the theater, and everyone kind of laughed at that because it was something that a lot of people have been wanting for a long time. And it's kind of a, a nice little post credit scene bit. So I think people should come away pleased with that. So let's go ahead and talk into spoilers at this point. Uh, you've been warned at this point. So here we are. Spoilers for Dragon Ball Super, Superhero past the six minute mark. So the big spoiler stuff right now is the Red Ribbon Army uh, recruits uh, Dr. Jero's grandson. Uh, Dr. Hito was his name. I got to get used to the new characters. And they, they also had this other guy too. It was named Carmine. And he's like the head of the Red Ribbon Army. He's like, uh, like kind of like right-hand guy. Uh, he's got this really ridiculous hairpiece. He even has like a, a part like built into like the roof of his car. So it protects his like uh, his ridiculous haircut. I thought that was very funny. Like Toriyama wrote this thing, obviously. Um, and he just has a natural, like he, he just is a funny guy. Like he knows how to write humor. Uh, there's a lot of visual gags sprinkled in throughout the movie. Uh, I, I, like I said, it's a very, very fun. It's the funniest of the most, it's the funniest by far of the Dragon Ball movies. Um, at least the Dragon Ball Super movies for sure. Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Z. Since Battle of Gods, it's by far the funniest. And I think, like I said, I enjoyed that tone. Rather than having something like world ending, like Dragon Ball Super Broly was a lot more emotional and a bit darker of a film. It had its humor sprinkled in throughout and some funny bits with Frieza. But this one is definitely more, more of a comedy and more lighthearted. More in tune with like the original Dragon Ball than anything else. Obviously, because they're bringing back the Red Ribbon Army. There is a lot of kind of uh, like a bit of a history, like kind of a recap of the story of the Red Ribbon Army, like Android 18, 17, and kind of everything like that. Uh, we find out, like I said, Dr. Zero had a son. We see the family like bloodline, even like tie-ins to like Dragon Ball Fighter Z. If you uh, if you played that game with one of the androids there, and so we got that aspect to it, and then. So Dr. Jero's son, he's got a little bit of a dark side to him, but he's still, like, viewed the Red Ribbon Army as, like, kind of villains and then, like, other people as heroes. He's kind of manipulated and tricked into it by the Red Ribbon Army uh, in viewing that, like, Capsule Corp and that is uh, really a secret alien, like, invasion ready to enslave humanity. So he builds, like, these uh, two androids, Gamma 1, Gamma 2. And then he goes ahead and he's putting together something else, which is called Cell Max. Now, he built some things into, like, defense mechanisms into Cell Max. Uh, yes, Cell kind of returns. It's not the same Cell. Uh, he doesn't even really speak. He's just kind of like, uh, like if when Gohan, Goku, like, and Gohan and them, like, Vegeta transform into, like, the great at the Ozaru, uh, where they just kind of roar and stuff. And he's like a giant Cell, uh, which is, like, which leads to some pretty cool uh, epic action sequences. This is the first one in the different, like, kind of CG animation style. Some bits kind of go the 2D bit, and other bits are clearly, like, the new style. It takes a minute to kind of get used to, but there's still a lot of good action bits with it, too. Uh, music isn't quite as epic as it was in Dragon Ball Super Broly. I was kind of hoping for some big moments, and some big moments, like the big transformation bits, like Piccolo finally gets a new form, and it looks pretty sweet. He calls himself, like, Orange Piccolo, so I like that aspect to it, and then Gohan gets a new form as well. I think it's been some people called it Final Gohan or Gohan Beast is one of the other forms of it. It's like he's got a ridiculous amount of hair. He's like his hair turns white. Uh, that was it like the epicness. It's not quite the same as when he first transformed in like Super Saiyan 2 <clears throat> back in the day or anything like that. But it's still kind of cool, like a pretty epic moment when he was able to transform like that. So I like that aspect to it. I thought that was pretty fun and pretty cool. Uh, and then he kind of like takes charge and uses a special beam cannon and stuff. And Piccolo grows to a giant size, which uh, they even kind of acknowledge certain jokes within the series. Krillin's like, hey, why don't you just grow to like his size? He's like, oh yeah, I forgot I could do that. So it's kind of like, even I think Toriyama admits he forgets certain aspects of the Dragon Ball lore at times. And that's kind of like, and, you know, people are in kind of on the joke a bit. So that was pretty fun. Um, I should also mention Goku, Vegeta, and that role in the story. They're just, like, off-planet this whole time, which is 
they're based, they're intentionally left out of the picture so the other heroes kind of have to rise to stand up. Uh, Beerus, uh, we come to find he has a type uh, for that girl. What was her Jean? I, I can't remember her name off the top of my head because she was only in Dragon Ball Super Broly. And I, I haven't watched that one in a little while. But the girl who like uh, kind of took care was on Broly's team and saw she uh, wished him to like his planet at the end of that movie to kind of save him. But she's in the movie. Beerus has like a like a big crush on her, which like the whole audience like as soon as he got to the review was like, oh, oh, we're all laughing, and having a good time at that. Um, like I said, it's a really fun movie to see with the crowd. So the stuff with Beerus there that was pretty entertaining. That was pretty great stuff. Uh, and now we find that he has a type, which is something you don't really expect with the God of Destruction. So let's see what other comedic potential that kind of leads to, which may surprise some people because some people probably expected her to be with like Broly. But Broly's in this movie too. He still kind of has some rage issues, but he's kind of being kept on Beerus's planet. They're kind of keeping him out of the reach of Frieza because he's still having issues kind of controlling that anger and stuff. And uh, so yeah, like Whis and that's there. Uh, Goku and Vegeta do have another fight in this thing. And, and one of the best things of all time, the post credit scene, Vegeta finally wins! He beats Goku, like, in a one-on fight, it's like a barely thing, he's like, I did it! Finally! I won something! And everyone's, like, laughing, I yelled finally, because he finally beat Goku in a fight. Um, <clears throat> but they obviously had some limitations in their battle that they were doing, but he beat him, and, like, that was a pretty good, funny gag. A Whis gets chewed up kind of by Bulma, it's like, oh, sorry, we were, uh, we're having an ice cream thing going on here, sorry, Mr. Calls. So, like I said, it's nothing too serious or anything like that. Um, <laughs> there's some really funny stuff, like I said, Piccolo is the main character of this movie, he initially gets attacked by one of the Gamma characters, and he kind of gets, uh, whisked away on this adventure, he kind of has to infiltrate the Red Ribbon Army base, he goes undercover and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of comedy with him, too, like, him trying to be undercover, like, this is a different side of Piccolo where we're not really used to seeing, like, him going secret, like, agent man, uh, kind of mode, um, he also kind of uses this to kind of take advantage of the situation to kind of get Gohan, like, to get off his ass a bit, too, like, Pan, for instance, like, they, like, they want to kidnap Pan as a means to draw Gohan out of hiding, the Red Ribbon Army does, and so Piccolo, like, Pan kicks the crap out of one of the soldiers, and, like, uh, Piccolo is kind of there in disguise. He's like, hey, just, I need you to play along with this stuff. So they, they use this as a means to kind of, like, get Gohan to kind of snap. Once he sees his, like, he's kind of lazy, and so, like, get out of here. <clears throat> then he sees when his daughter is trapped, and he kind of goes berserk. <clears throat> and Piccolo's like, yes, finally. And even, like, they kind of play along that Pan's getting hurt and stuff, and Piccolo even plays along with her like that, too. He's like, hey, Pan, let's try this. And then Gohan just keeps getting progressively, like, more and more angry and unleashes more of his potential. Like, you got Super Saiyan, I think a little bit of Super Saiyan 2, definitely Mystic Gohan. And then, obviously, he turns into his final transformation, which is Gohan Beast. Like, how he's able to tap into that, I don't know. But they also do acknowledge that Gohan has the potential to become the strongest warrior in the entire series, uh, if he just, like, kind of stuck to his training and did things. Maybe this final beast mode is the strongest. I don't quite know. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes up against something like Ultra Instinct or Super Saiyan Blue or all those other crazy transformations. Like, Dragon Ball just keeps having so many more tr more transformations. Piccolo, of course, gets a new one, which is finally, it's about damn time. All the Saiyans keep transforming into different things, and Piccolo transforms into what he calls Orange Piccolo. That was a pretty sweet new form. It's about time Piccolo got something else. Um, my main weak point, I, I should kind of mention, of the movie is... Uh, I was disappointed in Cell in this thing, mainly because it's not, like, the perfect Cell that I know, and I was kind of hoping that he was coming back to get at least, like, get a bit of a personality, but like I said, he's kind of just more of the Ozaru-type thing, just kind of roaring as a giant Cell. I feel like they just brought Damian Clark back to go and is like, it's like kind of like a, like a semi-perfect Cell-esque design. He just kind of roars, and I'm like, oh, I, I, I get it, because he wasn't fully, like, ready uh, as a like, what the, what the new doctor, what Dr. Jarrell's grandson was trying to do, he wasn't ready for testing, it was kind of just a last minute activation by, like, Magenta, who was, like, the new head of the Red Ribbon Army, to kind of, like, uh, do something like that, and he kind of gets activated early, so all the modifications in that weren't necessarily done, so he was kind of just in, like, uh, a raw beast mode, per se, and I was disappointed, I wanted to have a little bit of Cell's personality, but it, it did feel kind of rushed, uh, in terms of the scene, like, they set it up earlier on in the movie that he's, the new version of Cell is coming back, but it didn't quite live up to the potential that I was hoping for, and I really kind of wanted to see the return of, like, Perfect Cell, but unfortunately, we just don't seem to be getting that. Hopefully one day we'll get the real Cell back, because this is just another <clears throat> modification, uh, a different version of Cell. Like, like they kind of took the <clears throat> basis of Cell and then kind of made their own version of it, so it's not quite the same. It's not the big epic comeback I was hoping for, but it is still something. So, uh, that's really kind of my only complaint, like, that's just kind of me just being a little bit disappointed that they didn't 
it didn't quite live up to the potential that I was hoping for. Uh, we get to see other characters show up in the climax too. Android 18's back, and it was pretty cool to see her. Oh, and before I forget, uh, shout out Jack to you, Big Jack Films. He wanted me to give a shout out uh, because of like his thing with Android 18 or whatever. So if you're watching this, Jack, there's your shout out. For, I completely forgot about it 15 minutes into this video, but shout out to you, buddy. Um, just want for like a. He's got an interview with the actors who voiced 18 on that. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below. So there you go. There's your cheap plug, Jack. Um, so yeah, uh, 18 shows up. Uh, Bulma had like uh, gathered several fighters. So I think she's like, I got all the best fighters in the world. And Krill and the whole audience kind of laughed at that. Because like, they're still, you know, they kind of poke fun at Krillin and stuff too. And he's like, I, the, everyone on the force thinks I'm strong. <laughs> uh, like I said, this is a very, very funny Dragon Ball movie. And I just had a really good time from beginning to end. Uh, the, some of the, I don't know what my favorite part of all the whole movie was, but there's a lot of great visual gags, Piccolo trying to drive, uh, there's a lot of references back to one of my favorite episodes of Dragon Ball Z is when him and Goku try to get their license and they failed. He tries to fly this plane to kind of sneak Pan out of there, like, to kind of play along with this whole situation, and he just keeps driving horribly <laughs> through the sign. I thought that was pretty funny, and I like Piccolo trying to use a cell phone and FaceTime and that. Uh, that's pretty cool. Dende makes an appearance. There's appearances from, like, most characters from Dragon Ball. You don't get everyone. You don't get Master Roshi and all that. Um, but there is still a lot of potential to see the series kind of come back and, like, grow on from here. There's just there's just a lot of fun to be had with it. It's got me excited to see what's next. I really miss this franchise. I, I know we have some new games coming out. And I know there's Super Dragon Ball Heroes, which is like a card game anime type thing. It's not the same as uh, Dragon Ball Super. In fact, I don't think it's ever even had an official release here in the States. But it's been th like three years since the last Dragon Ball movie uh, came out. And I, I just missed it. I, I really miss seeing this here. And I just had a really good time with it. So those are my thoughts on it. I don't know what else I can really add to it. Dragon Ball fans should be pleased with it. I'm very pleased with it. Like I said, I had a really good time laughing. The whole crowd was really into it. Uh, it doesn't quite reach the epic levels in some ways as um, Dragon Ball Super really did. It doesn't quite have the emotions there, but that's not really what the story's trying to be. It's trying to be a little bit more lighthearted, more in tune with the original Dragon Ball. It's very, very funny. Uh, there's still a lot of stuff that I didn't mention in this thing, and I don't think I could like remember everything, but I just had a really good time with it. That's that's all I can say. I had a lot of fun with it. I think it should please most Dragon Ball fans. Gohan fans will be happy. Piccolo fans should be happy. And Vegeta fans, you deserve this. I've been wanting Vegeta to step up and have a big victory. Yeah, it's more played for laughs because it wasn't an uber serious fight, but he did finally get a win in on Goku, and everyone was happy about it. I was happy about it, and... I was very pleased. I had a big smile on my face. I just wish it didn't end. I wish I was still in the theater watching the movie. That's the only downside sometimes of when you just get like a Dragon Ball like movie coming out is you're enjoying the ride while you watch it and you have a good time up till the end, but you're sad to see it go. <laughs> so hopefully they bring back the anime series sometime soon because I just, I just sort of miss it. So yeah. Also, uh, one of the Gammas uh, has a death scene in there too. So that was actually like a nice touching scene to show a bit of a heroic side. Kind of mirrored in some ways what 16 was doing, but it didn't have quite the emotional impact I think they were hoping for, but it was a nice little scene. And they were kind of caught up in this whole thing. We were given false information and viewed the others as like villains and such, but there's still like a goodness within them too. So that was nice too. Hopefully they'll play factors into the new season. No Jacko or any of that in this one or some of the other gods of destruction. They do reference them, but they're, they're kind of kept to the side. So there's still a lot going on in this universe. There's still so much potential untapped potential with it. Now that Piccolo is back into the game at full strength, Gohan is too. Uh, hopefully they can play some roles into bigger things to come, but it was nice to see Gohan and Piccolo take the center stage of a movie and let he and take a break from Goku and Vegeta. I love Goku and Vegeta. Vegeta's arguably like my favorite character in Dragon Ball alongside uh, Gohan, Piccolo, and of course, Perfect Cell. Like Cell is my favorite villain, so I'm, I'm a little disappointed I didn't quite get that return to Cell. But I gotta understand, this isn't actually the Cell that we came to know. It's not like he got a second chance like Frieza did. Why bring back Frieza when you can bring back Cell? That's what I'm hoping for. Maybe we'll bring back the real Cell sometime soon. 
Uh, he's probably in hell there somewhere. It freezes in there, so is Cell. I mean, we've seen it before in Dragon Ball Z. But then again, they kind of continuity sometimes with these things kind of all over the place. But uh, yeah, so. All right, well, I feel like I've rambled on long enough. Go check out Dragon Ball Super Superhero. I'll probably try and see it again. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to try and get out another video, uh, a review of the movie Beast with Idris Elba. I'm looking forward to that. I think it looks kind of fun and intense. But for something lighthearted and for Dragon Ball fans, this is an absolute must to watch. So yeah, that's all I got to say. Uh, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content. And as always, take care now. Bye-bye then. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.